Hey YouTube friends, today I'm going to show you how to make your own charcoal using deadfall branches and scrap wood, firewood, old limbs from your yard, anything like that that you can burn, you're going to turn it into charcoal and I'm going to show you how. So let's dig in. Some will ask the question, why? Why in the world would you make your own charcoal? I mean, you can go to the store and just buy your some. It's not that expensive. Here's four reasons to make your own charcoal. Number one, it's free. Charcoal is not that expensive, but with inflation, prices are going up. You can get a bag of charcoal, 20 pounds for between 15 to $20, but you can make your own charcoal for free and you can have fun and you can clean up your yard in the process. Plus you'll be learning a skill that can be very useful to you. Who knows? You might need it down the road. Maybe charcoal prices go way up or maybe you find yourself in a situation where you just can't get charcoal. You will know how to make your own using resources that are all over the place. Number two, Homemade charcoal is better quality than store-bought. What you buy in the store may have additives in it, chemicals that they're using to bind charcoal powder into briquettes. Even the whole lump charcoal that you buy may have things that have been added to it that aren't natural. The do-it-yourself charcoal we will make will be pure wood, no chemicals, no additives. And since you're making it yourself, you will be responsible and you will know exactly what you put into it. You don't know what those companies put into their charcoal when they made it and you bought it at the store. Number three, making your own charcoal is better for the environment. Someone had to manufacture that charcoal you bought in the store. Usually it was in an industrial setting using lots of energy, petroleum products to burn the charcoal to make it and there were chemicals and it created a lot of pollution and there was waste byproducts that came from that industrial product. When you make your own charcoal, you are simply using up stuff that you already have on hand, probably in your yard or in a yard in your neighborhood, broken limbs, sticks, dead fall from your yard, maybe even something like a wooden chair or a wooden piece of furniture that you were going to take to the dump. But instead of putting those things into a landfill, you're going to use those free resources as both the source for the heat to make the charcoal and for the charcoal itself. And by using up this yard trash, you may be keeping it from filling up a landfill which is better for the environment. Lastly, making charcoal is fun. It's basically just standing around a campfire all day. It's the perfect activity for a cool fall day. Plus, you can invite some friends over, you can cook some steaks or some hamburgers, roast some hot dogs or some marshmallows, have a Coke, drink a beer, enjoy the outdoors. It's a beautiful time of the year to be outside the colors of fall are all over the place and the weather is not too hot, not too cold. The bugs are beginning to die down. It's a beautiful time to be outside making charcoal while you stand around a campfire. Now you're going to need some things to make charcoal, but it's not much and it should be stuff that you pretty much have on hand already. Here's four things you'll need. Number one, you're going to need some small pieces of dried wood small twigs and sticks, things like that, to help get the fire started. You may even use some of the leaves that are so readily available and falling in your yard this time of year. Number two, you're gonna need some larger pieces of wood, preferably some good 
dried wood. You can use anything that's made from wood that you want to burn. Limbs that fell in your yard, a tree that you cut down or that fell in your neighbor's yard. Um, a lot of times you can find free firewood that people are trying to get rid of. You know, they maybe had a tree fall in their yard and they cut it up into pieces, but now they got a big pile of wood and they really don't have any use for it. And a lot of them will just give it to you for free if you'll just haul it off. Then you can take that home, you can use it to burn in your fire pit to make the charcoal, and you can also use it to turn it into charcoal. You can also burn old furniture, you can burn pallets. Um, when I made my charcoal in this video, I had an old rocking chair that had broken and fallen apart, and some old dining room chairs that had broken and were falling apart. And I didn't want to take those to the landfill, so I burned them and helped uh, heat the can that I'm using to make my charcoal. Thirdly, for my method, you're also going to need a metal trash can or metal barrel, something with a lid so that you can put the wood inside it, and that's what's going to turn into your charcoal. Lastly, you're going to need a safe place to build a fire. Be mindful of the conditions. If it's too dry and too windy, it may not be the best time to be starting a fire. You don't want sparks to spread from your fire and catch your yard or your neighbor's yard on fire. A safe place to build a fire, like a fire ring or a fire pit, will be a great place to build a fire. Also, keep a water hose handy just in case things do get out of control. You want to have that water hose ready so that you can put out the fire if things start getting crazy. Um, look at your local conditions too. Make sure that there's not a, a burn ban on, going on in your area uh, at the time that you're trying to make your charcoal. Follow all your rules uh, and all your local regulations. Step one is to cut up your wood into small pieces about the size of a brick. So we're looking at uh, cutting up, I like to cut up branches that are two to four inches in diameter and I want to cut them into sections that are maybe uh, four to six inches long. Step two, you want to put those small pieces of wood inside your metal burn barrel. If you're using a metal trash can, be careful. You don't want to use that is made with galvanized steel because that galvanized zinc compound they put on the metal when it gets hot it can it can be poisonous to breathe so just be mindful of what you're using uh, one of these old metal burn barrels is probably the best way to go uh, you can get them for super cheap or even free if you look on facebook marketplace or uh, something like that fill your barrel up as full as you can get it you can see the size of the pieces that i'm using here and then we're going to put a lid on our can. What we want to do is we want to keep oxygen out of the can. It's not necessary to absolutely make this airtight uh, seal. Um, once the can gets heated up, it's going to create pressure on the inside that's going to push all of the oxygen out of the can and keep oxygen from coming backwards into the can. Place your can in the middle of your fire pit. It's going to be rather heavy when it's full of wood, um, but you can go ahead and get it in there, get it in the center of your ring. And now the next part is pretty simple. You're just going to put firewood around the can, and you're going to build up the fire, and you're going to keep that fire going for four to eight hours um, and just let it burn you're gonna have to keep adding firewood to it but that's all right if it's a pretty day outside you just stand around the campfire now what's happening here is we are actually baking the wood on the inside it's not burning like the firewood on the outside it's not burning with oxygen it's baking and we're basically evaporating out all of the natural moisture and wood gas that is inside the wood on the inside of the barrel. So you can see the fire burning here 
And what you see coming out of the lid, that is not wood burning. That is actually gas that is coming off of the wood on the inside of the barrel. As it comes out of the barrel, it is catching fire. Now, after you let it burn and let the fire completely burn out and then leave it for three or four days, don't get impatient. Don't open it too early. Let me tell you how I know that. I spent a whole day making charcoal one time and then I opened up the barrel and it was still hot inside. And as soon as it hit that oxygen, guess what happened? It was just like I... Uh, started that charcoal on a grill. It all started turning white. It all started burning and I lost the entire batch. So after you finish burning, let it sit in the fire pit. Don't move it for three or four days. There's no rush. Let it cool off. Let it die down. Let it completely finish. And then you can open it up and see what you got. Look at all of this charcoal that I've got in this barrel. And I'm going to put this in a, a paper bag. This is an old chicken feed bag. And uh, that's just the way I'm going to store it. Now this charcoal will be excellent. You can use it to grill. If you want to cook some hamburgers, hot dogs, steak, whatever. You can use it for that. It's going to burn nice and clean. Not, It's not going to smoke very much at all. And it's just like charcoal that you would buy in the store except it's better you can also use this charcoal if you're a blacksmith or if you want to get into blacksmithing you can use this charcoal in your forge and you can heat up metal with it get it red hot and work it another thing you can use this charcoal for is biochar which is an additive that you could use in your garden I've not used borrowed char before, but I may use some of this for uh, an additive for my garden. You soak it in uh, fertilizer, let it dry out good, and because the charcoal molecular structure has lots of little cracks and crevices, it holds on to that fertilizer. And then when you grind it up and put it in your garden, it's going to help the garden soil sort of slow release that fertilizer into the soil so over a longer period of time your soil is going to receive the nutrients that it needs to help your garden grow better so that's another uh, way that you could use this charcoal um, that I honestly don't have a lot of experience with but I like to learn so that's probably something I will try in this coming growing season Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6 through 20. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord of heaven's armies. I am the first and the last. There is no other God who is like me. Let him step forward and prove to you his power. Let him do as I have done since ancient times when I established a people and explained its future. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim my purposes for you long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any other God? No, there is no other rock, not one. How foolish are those who manufacture idols. These prized objects are really worthless. The people who worship idols don't know this, so they are all put to shame. Who but a fool? would make his own God, an idol that cannot help him one bit. All who worship idols will be disgraced, along with all these craftsmen, mere humans who claim they can make a God. They may all stand together, but they will stand in terror and shame. The blacksmith stands at his forge to make a sharp tool, pounding and shaping it with all his might. His work makes him hungry and weak. It makes him thirsty and faint. Then the woodcarver measures a block of wood and draws a pattern on it. 
He works with chisel and plane and carves it into a human figure. He gives it human beauty and puts it in a little shrine. He cuts down cedars. He selects the cypress and the oak. He plants the pine in the forest to be nourished by the rain. Then he uses part of the wood to make a fire. With it, he warms himself and bakes his bread. Then, yes, it's true, he takes the rest of it and makes himself a god to worship. He makes an idol and bows down in front of it. He burns part of the tree to roast his meat and to keep himself warm. He says, ah, that fire feels good. Then he takes what's left and he makes a god, a carved idol, and he falls down in front of it, worshiping and praying to it. Rescue me, he says, you are my God. Such stupidity and ignorance. Their eyes are closed and they cannot see. Their minds are shut, they cannot think. The person who made the idol never stops to reflect. Why, it's just a block of wood. I burned half of it for heat. I use it to bake my bread and roast my meat. How can the rest of it be a god? Should I bow down and worship a piece of wood? The poor deluded fool feeds on ashes. He trusts something that can't help him at all. Yet, he cannot bring himself to ask, is this idol that I'm holding in my hand a lie? Friends, you know today, at least in America, I don't know anybody that's worshiping wooden idols or even stone idols or metal idols. We don't worship idols and statues like that like we used to do and like people used to do in ancient times. But we still have idols. We have an idol. Anytime we try to take anything and try to receive fulfillment from that thing that only God can give us. And so we may not worship statues, but we worship money. We worship power. We worship influence. We worship politicians. And that gets us in all kinds of problems. We worship celebrities, famous people, people that we look up to. You may even worship a, a spiritual leader, a pastor, but they're just a person. And you know, the thing is that sometimes the things we turn into idols, they're not even bad things. They can be good things, but they become bad for us when we try to get fulfillment from them that really only God can give us. And so that's why sometimes we may even turn something good into an idol. Something like making your children into an idol. Letting your spouse be an idol. Those are good things. Your family can be an idol. I mean, these are good things. Your children, your spouse, your family. They're not bad. Love, romantic love or relationships can become an idol for you. They're not bad things. But they're not God. And if you're expecting your children, your spouse, relationship, or anything to fulfill you and help you in ways that only God can, then those things are going to disappoint you. They're idle. They're not God. And not only is it harmful to you, but it's harmful to them. You know how harmful it is? How can you have a healthy marriage? If you're expecting your husband or your wife to be God, you know, they are always going to disappoint you. And they don't want to disappoint you. They don't want to let you down. But they just are not capable of being God for you. And of course, we don't think, we never would say out loud, we're expecting them to be a God for us. We don't verbalize it that way. But a lot of times, we're expecting unreasonable things from people in our lives and you're never going to have healthy well-adjusted children if you're expecting them to fill a void in your life that was really meant to be filled by God that's not fair to your kids so we've got to learn to not be fools we've got to learn to be people who let God be God and when we get our relationship with God right, all of those other things 
fall into place. It's amazing how that happens. Well, today, my friends, I want to encourage you. Get yourself, get yourself right with God. Fix that relationship. Then all those other things will fall into place. Matthew 6, 33 sums it up. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these other things will be given to you as well. That is the truth. If you live that way, you'll be much more happy and much more fulfilled in life. So let's do it. And let's get out there and let's grow and be fruitful.